Plus X Diggers, or also known as the Nether Highway Group, was a group of players formed in early January of 2017 by the group's leader, Burnsy. Their objective was to reach 2B2T's world border by completing the X Plus Eastern Nether Highway. From the group starting with one player, to mining millions of blocks and creating two of the most famous world border builds, I'll be telling you the history of the Plus X Diggers from the perspective of Burnsy. The story begins on December 14th, 2016. A player named Burnsy created a post on the 2B2T subreddit that detailed his plans to attempt to reach 2B2T's X plus border or die trying. Every 10% of the journey, Burnsy created a post updating the subreddit on the X plus Nether Highway's progress. While originally the journey was solo, these posts began receiving a lot of attention from many players who, while not directly invited, began walking down the X plus Nether Highway in hopes of helping Burnsy reach his goal. By February 5th, 2017, Burnsy had a group of around 10 players who had joined him in this journey to the world border. He created the official X Plus Digging Discord, which had open invites for anyone who wanted to participate in digging the highway. This Discord would soon become known as the Nether Highway Group. Several times throughout the journey, the group created bases to take a break from digging the highway. The major ones include Oasis Outpost, 15 million town, and 24 million base. However, the group also created many small bases, dupe stashes, and grinders at the milestones they created every 25,000 blocks along the highway. After many months of digging and basing along the X Plus Highway, the group completed the X Plus Highway on March 26, 2017, with over 30 people aiding the dig at least once. The highway stretched from 00 Nether to 2B2T's world border at 3,750,000 blocks, although they soon discovered that they weren't the first players to reach it. Upon reaching the world border, the group discovered bedrock and two signs outside the world border by the players I Tristan and Pyrobytes. How was this possible? Well, upon asking I Tristan through Discord, he told me that they had a backdoor with teleportation capabilities, so he and Pyrobyte decided to teleport to the end of the world and see what was there. They left the signs behind for others to find. I Tristan thinks his sign was in reference to either the admin or someone else with a backdoor finding out what they had done. I Tristan and Pyrobyte didn't expect legitimate players to find the signs, so for the plus X diggers to discover them was an accomplishment. Even I had some involvement with the signs, however, in a negative way. When I did my world border series to the plus X world border in late 2019, I showcased the signs and the remnants of Point Nemo. A few days later, a player named True3Game saw me at spawn and congratulated me and said he was inspired by my journey to the world border. After that, he flew off. What does this have to do with the video? Well, about a week later, a video was made from a player griefing the pyrobytes in I Tristan Science. Who was this player? True3Game. I still feel like it's my fault for the destruction of the signs, but it would have most likely been destroyed by someone else in the future. Back to the story. After the group found the signs, they started to create Point Nemo, one of the most infamous world border bases. Point Nemo is a term meaning something along the lines of hardest place in the world to reach. This name was given to the base since a player named Matt VTD commented in one of Burnsy's Reddit posts with a name idea, so Burnsy went with it. The group needed to build something at the border to celebrate their arrival, and it seemed like an appropriate name. Most of the group helped with construction, and they created a giant obsidian castle a Japanese style tower, a mini valley of wheat, and several smaller builds built by various players. Most notable was the custom terrain island at the border. It was here that the group discovered they can build their names out of obsidian in the border itself, rendering them ungriefable unless someone filled them in with more blocks. A few days later, a YouTuber named FitMC finished his border journey and toured Point Nemo. Point Nemo was very short-lived, which was inevitable since it was a publicly known base on 2B2T, no matter how far out you were. It was grieved by the players Chunker, Nordic93, and Babage. The group didn't want to break up after Nemo fell, so they decided pretty early on that, in addition to the public base that was Point Nemo, they would make a private base for group members only. A player named Willy Roof found a savannah biome with a huge mountain, and instantly, many of the base members agreed to build a base there. Thus, Point Dory was born several thousand blocks away from Point Nemo. It was named Point Dory, since it was a play on the Pixar movie Finding Nemo, in which there was a character named Dory. For this base, all Nether Highway Group members were invited, and soon Point Dory was flourishing with 30 base members. After two months of building, Point Dory became a massive base. What was created during those two months? Well, let's start at the Hall of Heroes. 
The Hall of Heroes contained every single base member head that helped with construction, or helped with mining the highway. It was created by the player Mining Minecraft as a way of giving back to the group since they helped him a lot. At the bottom of each player's head, there were personal belongings from each member. At the center of the Hall of Heroes was called the center of Point Dory. From here you could go in any direction, and it would take you to all sides of the base. A player named Scribble Fox created a giant castle. When he first began construction, the members thought it was a bit ambitious, but it turned out to bring Point Dory together. From every angle of the base, the castle can be seen because of how massive it is. The interior was never finished due to time constraints, but the amount of detail is insane. Near the castle, a staircase was created by Willy Roof. At Point Dory's origins, it was hard to get up and down on a mountain, so a staircase was created quickly. At the top of the mountain, many buildings and houses were created, and at the very top of the mountain, a pathway led to Ion's Taurus. It was a build that was in construction at Point Nemo, so it was built at Point Dory. This Taurus went all around Point Dory. Going west from the Hall of Heroes led you to two massive pyramids built by a player named Rasky. One was made out of sandstone, and the other out of obsidian. They're not as impressive as the other builds at Point Dory, but the amount of time to create the pyramids takes a lot of patience. A massive gape was dug by Rasky, and later decorated by Toy Soldier. The gape went all the way down to bedrock, and the leaf blocks were alpha leaves. Following the bridge to the left held Toy Soldier's border land. Originally, it was a small little farm, but Toy Soldier eventually turned it into a small village. Going up the path led to Isverg 86 Museum. Inside held player heads, illegals, banners, and map art. In the south, Undertale pixel art was created by a player named DryG underscore, and next to it, a donkey retirement home created by Burnsy. After a donkey dupe on 2 b 2 was patched, Burnsy decided to put the group's donkeys into a retirement home. After being cloned and duped thousands of times, they could finally rest. Going forward, led to Point Dory Cemetery created by Matt TVD. A staircase with the same style of one of the entrances of Scribblefox Castle led to the cemetery, and inside the cemetery, base members left signs on the tombstones. To the left of the cemetery led to a massive lake. It went all the way to bedrock, and the walls were made out of obsidian. It was created by Thieves and Sound by taking advantage of a TNT duplication glitch that allowed you to send the machine back and forth indefinitely and drop TNT. In all, there were so many builds and structures created at Point Dory that it would take me hours to view them all. If you want more information about the builds at Point Dory, I'll leave a link in the description of a 40 minute tour by Mining Minecraft documenting almost everything at the base. For 3 months, Point Dory flourished, however, drama was the downfall of this base. A player named XXQ caused a bunch of drama and ultimately killed the base. After multiple attempts of destroying parts of the Hall of Heroes, XXQ ran off on his own. When he was eventually questioned about why he left, he blamed his various basemates for harassing him. After weeks of uncertainty, XX2 caved in all that he knew, and it was revealed that his account, NTT West JPN, was an alt shared by a notorious griefer named Jared 2013. Jared secretly created some type of structure on the alt as well. Mining Minecraft also discovered that his copy, the only copy of Minecraft 121, and Itrison's 32k leggings were missing. XXQ decided to share coordinates of Jerry 2013's base, and Mining Minecraft and Joe Ilk proceeded to raid the base in the dead of night and steal back Minecraft 121. Itrison's 32k leggings were recovered from one of XXQ's shulkers, and the group gathered to decide on XXQ's fate. After days of deliberation, it was decided by Burnsy that XXQ would be kicked from the group and base. Days later, the coordinates to the base were publicly leaked by XXQ, and Point Dory was griefed days later by Babaj and Nordic93. A battle during the grief ensued where Joe Ilk and Mining Minecraft killed Babaj, sending him to spawn, but Nordic93 managed to escape and combat log. The base was then destroyed later that day once the defenders logged off. After the fall of Point Dory, the group dug to the plus plus corner, and after that, they combined with some other groups and lived at Moo Mega Base for two and a half years, which is a story for another day. Today, the Plus X Diggers split into smaller groups and still play. However, most of the original group is inactive currently. Maybe one day the group will come back, but their accomplishments of extending the Plus X Nether Highway helps multiple players travel on 2 b 2 z till this day. Thanks for watching. I would like to thank Burnsy, the 2 b 2 z Wiki, iTristan, and Mining Minecraft for the information in this video. I would also like to thank Simon XL, Alonary. Alex Mason Seals, The Cop Meister, Finn the Human LOL, and Caligal for being the actors in this video. 
leave a like and maybe consider subscribing for more information like this in the future. Anyway guys, stay fast and see you guys next time.